So a trio of rare birds kind of after migration has already concluded for the most part. Summer can seem like something of a dead time when it comes to birding. With migration all but over, many species disappear for a while as they raise young. Even with fewer birds moving around, there are still some rare species that show up. As summer was beginning, I made the trip toward Lake Michigan to try and get a look at a number of uncommon visitors in the state. Hey everyone, this is Ryan from Badgerland Birding. I am out chasing some rare birds that showed up after the general migration has kind of ended. So there were just reports at this beach of laughing gulls and Franklin's gulls, both of which are pretty rare for the state. So I'm gonna see if I can find these and then maybe some other birds afterwards too. My first stop was the Grant Park Beach, a popular location due to the flat sands that draw in a variety of different shorebirds in addition to gulls and terns. Almost immediately, I noticed an assorted group of birds north of the parking lot and made my way over to see which species I could pick out. Finding a large and diverse group of birds is both exciting and overwhelming, and this mixed batch of birds was no exception, as I didn't want to overlook any species. I started by identifying the largest gulls and terns in the group first, with ring-billed gulls, herring gulls, and Caspian terns all towering over most of the smaller ones. The bulk of the smaller species were common terns, identified by their grayish colored primary feathers as opposed to the white of a Forster's tern. A few Bonaparte's gulls were there as well. Then, off by itself, I noticed a gull with a black head and large white eye crescents. This was one of the species I was there to see, the Franklin's gull. During breeding season, Franklin's gulls have a dark head, white body, and gray wings. These birds winter along the western coast of South America, then migrate north in the springtime, flying over the Great Plains states to their breeding areas in south-central Canada and the north-central United States. During migration, Franklin's gulls venture into an incredibly diverse amount of habitats. During breeding season, you can find these gulls in marshes, where they gather in large numbers. I searched the rest of the beach, but was unable to find one of the laughing gulls that was earlier reported there. While at Grant Park, word came in that another state rarity had been found about 30 minutes south in the city of Racine, a red knot. I made the trip to North Beach and began scanning the vast sands of the Lake Michigan shoreline. More Caspian terns were present, as well as a sanderling. Shortly after finding these species, I noticed a chunky bird walking along the water's edge. Well, that was easy. Just walked on the beach. Red knot was right there. Uh, so now get to enjoy this cool rarity that's not quite in breeding plumage yet, but it is working on it with a little bit of red on the chest. In breeding plumage, red knots are quite distinctive from other sandpiper species. They have a namesake reddish-orange color on their face and underside, a short bill, and a dark brown and tan mottled looking back. During non-breeding season, red knots look much less colorful, with a grayish back and white underside. In North America, these birds winter along the ocean coasts of the United States, Mexico, and South America. In spring, they move north to their breeding areas all the way up in the Arctic. During most of the year, red knots can be found in beaches, shorelines, mud flats, salt marshes, and generally anywhere along the ocean. During migration, they live in much of the same habitat, but may stop over for only a short amount of time and then be on their way. After getting plenty of videos of the red knot, I moved back to Grant Park to see if any new gulls or terns had shown up. When I arrived, I was greeted with an impressive number of birds. There's a big group of gulls and terns out there, and there's definitely some of the common stuff, but there are also a few individuals out there that are interesting. So I'm going to scan through this whole thing and see what I can pull out. Much to my delight, I was able to find one of my target species. 
There are a lot of Caspian turns out here, a ton of common turns out here, a couple of Forster's turns. Those are definitely not the most common species out here in the turn department. And then a lot of gulls, including Franklin's and Laughing. So the two best birds here are still present, which is very exciting. Two dark-headed gulls that look very similar. You can tell the Laughing apart because it will have dark primary feathers. You can see when it's sitting, they're pretty much just straight up dark, whereas the Franklin's has some white spotting on. And uh, the Laughing should be a little bit bigger, a little lankier looking. Laughing gulls are extremely common birds along the Atlantic coastline, where they are seen around beaches and salt marshes. In the Great Lakes states, laughing gulls tend to show up in late spring and early summer. Sometimes they even spend the entire summer around these large bodies of water. These birds can often be found in groups of other gulls, and actually look very similar to Franklin's gulls, but with a few key differences. For more information on how to tell the two apart, check out the ID tips video in the description below. This has been a really productive day so far. Got the red knot and then these two rare gulls. So a trio of rare birds kind of after migration has already concluded for the most part. Let's see if there's at least one more that I can get today to uh, top it all off. I moved north to try and find one more rare bird species. Last stop of the day, I am trying to see a lark bunting that was reported yesterday. And it was seen earlier today. I've already actually been through here once and didn't see it. I'm hoping that this time it will show up. However, I don't think it's been reported today after that really early morning sighting. So uh, it's not looking good, but you can always hold out hope, right? While the lark bunting never made itself known, there were a few other interesting bird species to look at, including some adorable baby killdeer. And ironically enough, the two birds I had spent the earlier part of the day trying to see, a Franklin's gull and a laughing gull. Definitely a lot of red-winged blackbirds around which keep faking me out because they have that same general uh, color and then that wing bar which is kind of similar to the lark bunting but lark bunting does not look like it is here anymore. Maybe it's just taking a rest somewhere but I'll probably have to get going soon and will not be able to get this one added to the year list. While it can be a great time for fun and entertainment, summer can sometimes actually be a boring time for birding. It was nice to close out spring by seeing a few rare bird species. Hopefully, some other interesting birds will show up during the hottest time of the year. But until then, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding.